is the first thing coming to your mind when you hear the words a Russian game? A bizarre artistic vision, a strange original gaming experience and a bunch of other abstruse words. Or just a lousy piece of work on the Unity engine made by two guys after the day in school with one hand on the keyboard and another hand with a bottle of cheap beer, which probably <laughs> If you were expecting the latter, then today you are out of luck because you hit the jackpot. Today I will talk about the game ECB Y City. You ask me, Andre Arledis, why City? Wow! With a serious face and a massive Slavic accent, I'll tell you. Well, if there is a chance to test you bar for free, then I agree. No matter what the developers of this game said, calling it a parody on one game in open world that mocks modern video blogging, Russian rap and crazy internet stuff. I paid my pennies for this and I will use my rights to crap up this creation to the maximum to get a couple of views. <laughs> Curse the sound design? No, because they already take <laughs> The crew gameplay. <laughs> and the last to inflict mental injury on the player. I have a brain injury. Help! Help! If you call shit and sticks a work of art, it will not become more pleasant. But they moved Aya to the meta level. They made the 4K version, and the old version became beta and is no longer supported, thereby throwing away all those who bought it before. Like they made homage to Rockstar that sells the same game multiple times. Guys, this is so Los Momentos Classicos de Rockstar. I can talk about this game, it physically hurts. Let me tell you about another Russian party game than about those people who make only, only raw product and immediately sell DLCs for them. This is also a homage to an yeah, game. Yes, it is! In the West, it is customary to release simple, beautiful, well oiled, but completely soulless games for well known brands. Gaijin Entertainment did the opposite. They repeated the slasher Return of the King carelessly and then made fun of every detail of it. One Hood and the Ring is not so much an independent game as a parody of all existing games by brands. As a rule, Russian developers do with terribly serious minds. Either something incredibly sophisticated and global, or they read it complete crap. The absolutely the same facial expressions, by the way. Gaijin Entertainment decided to deviate a bit from the established scene and build a non-stressful trash slasher. What time is the game time to you stand locking you until you very dumb slash important character who always wants to die or you yourself dies? Only with the use of a bug, a feature, with constantly pressed block button and constant hitting attack button, it is possible to somehow defend yourself against enemies' attack. The game will make you gain experience points for the characters for a while, since each character has its own leveling. So it will be more difficult to even impossible for a one level character to complete the last levels of the game. You will have to return to the previous levels where there is opportunity to play with him. Some characters, in my opinion, are easier to complete levels since their attack hitboxes are better than others. 
Well, this is better than this. A mean a famous kebab expert, a short bag jubet. Hello, short. Yeah, hello. Listen. Why have you decided to come to the Sock FM studio? I am a cook and I make a delicious kebab of high quality. The humor of this game consists more of an absurd play on the original story of the Lord of the Rings. With toilet humor... Jokes about the Nazis and the main enemies are the orcs or criminals. The game is voiced by one person, Dmitry Goblin Puchkov. Since that is the whole point of this trademark. Sudden death. The plot is pretty straightforward. The game tells you the story of two toddlers, Fyodor Beggars and Senya Ganjubas, who are fleeing from the army of Orcs and pedophiles, directed by Sauron and his errant man, a bad man Sarumyan, son of Wasserman. They must take the malevolent ring to Mardovia and throw it in the mouth of the Maratovian Blast Furnace. On the way, they are held by Major Kigdolf the Grey and a short stall clerk, Givi Zurabovich Seriteli, a drunk agronome, son of Agroprom, a Baltic elf named Lagovas, aka Fatherless, and the captain of the Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs, Varalkin of Honduras. In addition, the heroes will have to meet with packs of werewolves in uniform, arrange a barbaric hunt for the last red book octopus, face with the betrayal of Barogin. Смотри, паровоз летит. Сейчас я тебе покажу, что такое боль. Ах ты крысёныш поганый гнида козематная. Мне всё равно не больно. Ты глянь, братан, как он интересно стоит. And Pendle following his friends enters the ring with the terrible Bunderlock. These two games are from different generations. One parody is a parody of the society of modern Russia, and the other is an adaptation of a parody translation of the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. It is difficult to compare them because these games are more than 10 years apart. But some were interested in creating an entertaining game while others made a primitive build of ordinary clone of GTA on a Unity engine using tutorials from YouTube. Привет, вы на канале Fries. И сейчас вы мы сегодня покажем вам of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. You should respect the creations of other people. But hey, no one is protected from criticism. Not even me. Alright buddy, you have two options here. You can be a real human being. 
or you can be afraid. These are your two choices. Choose wisely. So what's it gonna be? Huh? Huh? Be amazed? <laughs> or be afraid? <laughs>